Peace and blessings, brothers and sisters. The most I put it something on my heart that I want to share with you. Um, we are going into the book of Ezekiel, chapter 37, Valley of Dry Bones. This Valley of Dry Bones is speaking about the house of Israel. Okay. One of the things that we need to remember is the Lord's word is line upon line, precept upon precept, here a little, there a little. All right. Now, we're going to start at the fourth verse. Again, he said unto me, prophesy unto these bones and say unto them, O ye dry bones. Hear the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God unto these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter into you, and ye shall live. Alright? Now remember, it's line upon line, precept upon precept, here a little, there a little. God says, servant, study and show thyself approved, rightfully dividing the word of God. And we're going to divide this word today, brothers and sisters. When he says, behold, I will cause breath to enter into you and you shall live. If you remember in the book of Genesis, we're going to go back when God was creating man. All right. And one of the first things that God did after he created him from the dust of the earth, God breathed into him and he became a living spirit. All right. Now, in the Lord God, we're in Genesis chapter two, verse seven. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living soul. He breathed into him the breath of life. So back in the book of Ezekiel chapter 37. Thus saith the Lord God unto these bones. Behold, I will cause breath to enter into you and you shall live. What is breath? Okay. We're going to look into it. Remember, servant study and show thyself approved, rightfully dividing the word of God. Breath means ruach, spirit, life. The air is in motion. Okay. So when he was breathing into us, he's breathing life, the spirit of God. Is breathing into us, brothers and sisters. Then the Lord says, I will lay sinews upon you and will bring flesh upon you and cover you with skin and put breath into you. And you shall live and you shall know that I am the Lord. We know what breath is. Breath is the spirit. It's life. Okay. Now, when he says... I will cover you. I will I will lay sinews upon you. All right? Sinews. What are sinews? It's muscle, strength, power, resilience. The house of Israel is getting their muscle, their strength, their power, their resilience. In the spirit, God is building up the house of Israel. You are not imagining anything. That's why God has his laborers out here. All right. Now, then he says, I will cover you with flesh. And when I behold, lo, the sinews and the flesh came up upon them. Okay. What is the flesh? The flesh. 
flesh. You got to put weight on, get heavier, fill out, thicken, widen, expand, develop, enhance, reinforce, refine. As we go through this walk of our awakening, as we are learning who we are and what the word of the Lord has for us, what the spirit of the Most High God is doing with us, for us, one of the things we know, he has breathed his word upon us, the spirit of the Most High God. He's put sinews upon us. Muscle, strength, power, vigor, resilience. The spirit of Israel, the house of Israel, is being strengthened. Okay? And the flesh is putting weight on, it's getting heavier, we're filling out, it's getting deeper, broader, vaster, stronger, higher. Okay? Now we'll go on. And when I beheld low, we're in chapter 37 of the book of Ezekiel. Now we're at the 8th verse. And when I beheld, lo, the sinews and the flesh came up upon them, and the skin covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said unto me, Prophesy unto the wind, prophesy, son of man, and say to the wind, Thus saith the Lord, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. Why? Did he call the house of Israel at that point slain? Because the other nations had intended to kill us violently. And they did kill many of the house of Israel violently. Their intention was to extinguish us. To destroy us as a nation. Okay. Then he said, so I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived and stood upon their feet, an exceeding great army. Then he said unto me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say, our bones are dried and our hope is lost. We are cut off for our part. There are many people who look at the descendants of the enslaved so-called Africans that were brought here or dispersed throughout the world during the diaspora, during the transatlantic slave trade. And they consider us a lost nation. They consider our hope gone. One of the things you'll notice that Israel the house of Israel, we are cut off for our part. For our part. What is a part? A piece, an element, a member, details that combine with other pieces to form the whole of something. A feature, body, a portion, a section, a component. Yes, we are cut off for our part. The other nations rob, loot, and plunder us. Of who we are, how we are. They attempt to steal the very essence of us. But God's in the house of Israel. And Son of Man has prophesied. Okay. Therefore prophesy and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, O my people, I will open your graves. And cause you to come up out of your graves and bring you into the land of Israel. Many people assume that they have buried us, caused this nation to fall and rise no more. But the chains of the sepulchre have been broken because God Almighty has called us to do a wonderful thing. He is our Redeemer. He has come to claim that which is His. Okay? And you shall know that I am the Lord, and I have opened your graves, O oh my people, and brought you up out of your graves, and put my spirit in you, and you shall live, and I will place you in your own land, and you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken it. As we move throughout the chapter, 
when we get to the end of the chapter, We're going to go to verse 26, chapter 37 of the book of Ezekiel. Moreover, I will make a covenant of peace with them. It shall be an everlasting covenant with them. And I will place them and multiply them and set my sanctuary in the midst of them forever. 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 My tabernacle also shall be with them. Yea, I will be their God, and they shall be my people. And the heathen shall know that I, the Lord, do sanctify Israel. When my sanctuary shall be in the midst of them forevermore. As we look throughout the Bible, we find that God set his tabernacle amidst the house of Israel. Okay? When you go to Revelation, the book of Revelations, chapter 21, verse 3, God will be among them. Who is he speaking of? He's speaking of Israel. Okay. In the book of Exodus, chapter 34, verse 14, for thou shalt worship no other God, for the Lord, whose name is Jealous, is a jealous God. All right. He's talking about whom we shall follow, about whose name we shall call upon. God is raising us up out of our graves, out of the death that came upon us when we were stolen away, when we forgot who we were, when we forgot to whom we belong. But God is always rested in the camp of Israel, and he shall do so again forevermore. It's spoken of in the book of Ezekiel. It's spoken of in the book of Exodus. It's spoken of in the book of Revelation. There are people who have spoken to me and try to say, oh, you're being divisive. It's for everybody. God is very distinct about what he says. That's why God also says you shall worship no idol. You shall have no other God before me. For I am a jealous God. My name is jealous. There are many people who feel as though when they say it somehow that makes it so. But they have placed themselves above God in that sense. When they want to say, oh, that was in the Bible, there's no... no God is coming for Israel. He's in the midst of us, raising us out of our graves where we have been buried away. They assume, these other nations assumed, we had them down and they will rise no more. But there's a God in the camp of Israel. There is a God in the camp. And God wants you to know today, he's jealous for you. Now, a lot of people, when they hear the term jealous, they think of it with a negative connotation. But actually, brothers and sisters, jealous has two meanings. And you have to understand when you divide that word of God, line upon line, precept upon precept, the jealousy that the world speaks about is actually covetous. Wanting something that is not yours. That is the negative of the jealousy of man, okay, when they are being covetous. But there is another jealousy that is holy and righteous. That's why God said in his word, Exodus 34, chapter 34, verse 14, For thou shalt worship no other God, for the Lord, whose name is jealous, is a jealous God. Why? Because we belong to him. Just like a husband would be jealous for his wife that no other man put his hands on her, just like a wife would be jealous for her husband that no other woman claimed the rights to him above her. God is jealous for Israel. There is no one else to whom we are supposed to be joined to. And he is a righteous God. 
brothers and sisters, the Valley of Dry Bone. It talks about, in the book of Ezekiel, it also talks about there was a shaking. There was a shaking, okay, when he spoke to them in the midst of that valley. There was a shaking as the bones began to come together. There was a shaking going on. Right now, brothers and sisters, there's a shaking going on. He's getting everybody's attention. That shaking is the waking up of the house of Israel. And that valley of dry bones, he has his prophets, his prophet, prophetesses speaking his word, that living word, decreeing and declaring. This work that you are doing, brothers and sisters, and speaking, teaching, reaching each other, is blessed and ordained by God. The wolves who have come in amongst us, God is exposing them. There are some people who have decided and determined that they want the acclaim, they want the praise unto themselves, but all praises, all honor, go to the Most High God. All right? God is exposing the wolves that have crept in amongst the land. There are different groups that have crept in, and some of them have targeted the daughters of Sarah. They have targeted the sisters. You might ask yourself, why is this spirit targeting the women? Because they are the mothers. They are the ones that bring forth the fruit of the body. But God is exposing them. At the same time, he's strengthening and building up the house of Israel. Brothers and sisters, I ask that you pray for the spirit of discernment. God gives freedom to all who ask in faith, believing in his name. In the name of his word, Jesus Christ, the Son, Yeshua, ask God to, to awaken the gifts of the Holy Spirit in you. We of God from those who are not. Remember, the devil goes about like a hungry lion seeking whom he may devour. But the Lord God will awaken you. He will awaken you to the spirit of the people around you. He will have that spirit of truth testify to your spirit to open your eyes. A lot of us, because we are so excited about this move of God, we follow people because we lack knowledge. My people perish for lack of knowledge. And we assume that everybody that comes to us speaking the word of God has the spirit of God upon them. But some of these people are idolatrous. They're idol worshipers. Sometimes the idol that they worship is themselves. So you have to ask for that spirit of discernment to guide you. You have to study, study, and show that self approved, rightfully dividing the word of God. We have to edify one another. We have to encourage one another, support one another. There are brothers in certain places that for some odd reason, some evil entity has creeped in, and they're brutalizing some of the sisters. Some of the daughters in the house of Israel, they murdered one. They could not find this young woman. And a lot of people are hoping that she'll still turn up. One man supposedly has confessed to her murder. But this was a man that came supposedly in the name of the Lord. God never put it on the men of Israel, the brutalized, the women of Israel, the daughters let alone murder them, and there is an answering. But you have to do your due diligence and study. You have to read, and before you read, brothers and sisters, pray. Pray, beloved, that God opens up the eyes of your spirit and gives you wisdom and understanding. Remember, the beginning of wisdom is fear the Lord. 
So don't fear any man. You take it to God in prayer and ask God to open your eyes to enlighten you about this move that's going on. It's beautiful to be zealous for the Lord. It's beautiful to want to be a part of the house of Israel because there are some whose work is evil. And there are others who try to use that evil work as a means to say all Israel is evil. See, the devil, he, he, he's subtle. He's crafty. But God will not be mocked. He will not be stopped. His work is a great work. So I say to you, brothers and sisters, study. Don't take my word for it. Don't take other people's words for it. I don't care how eloquently they speak, how intellectual they sound. And do not let anyone intimidate you. Sisters, brothers, don't let them intimidate you. Don't fear him who can destroy the body and ignore him who can destroy both body and soul in hell. God is almighty, all powerful. Okay? When an enemy comes in like a flood, God raises up a standard against him. God's got laborers out here. And we're speaking to you. I'm encouraging the laborers. You're doing a great and mighty work, brothers and sisters. A great and mighty work. If nobody told you these um, works that you do, as you study, as you share the word with the house of Israel, you're feeding the body. You're strengthening, you're putting flesh on them, the sinews that are spoken of in the book of Ezekiel, the Valley of Dry Bones, chapter 37. All right. That word of God is the spirit of the most high Lord. Understand the testimony of Jesus Christ is gift prophecy. So as you speak as different beloved brothers and sisters put this word out there, be it by videos, be it by you testifying individually to people that you meet. As you study, you are doing a great and mighty work. And it is noted, we strengthen one another as faith sharpens faith. So as iron sharpens iron, so does faith sharpen faith. I am encouraged and edified by a lot of what the brothers and sisters are doing. You be encouraged and edified. Let this word do its mighty work inside of you. We're building each other up. And it's the word of God. When God went to Ezekiel, he told Ezekiel, speak, speak. And as he prophesied, there was a shaking. There was a shaking. And the bones started rattling. Because that word of God can go in and do what no other word can do. And understand the power of the word of God. The word of God will expose the spirit of a person. Yes, it will. Yes, it will. You speak that word and that separating occurs. The sheep from the goat, the wheat from the tail. Teach one another. Encourage each other. This is done with the spirit of love, which is God. Love for the house of Israel, love for one another. If I speak with the tongue of an angel and have not love, I am nothing. My love is for the Most High God, for the Holy Spirit, for His word of life, Yeshua. And in turn, I can't help but love my people. We are a reflection of our Father, learning and growing, just like those dry bones. But when they stood on their feet, when they stood on their feet, merciful God, we're going to find out, like I said, rightfully dividing the Word of God. Brothers and sisters, when you read, when you study, have your dictionary, have your thesauruses, use your cell phone to uh, research the words, the meaning of words that you see, all right? A knowing comes when you know 
All right. No, to be aware of relationship, a consciousness, to be informed, to recognize the nature of, to be familiar with. Okay. To have experience of. All right. These are the things we need to know the word of God. We need to have a relationship. We need to be able to recognize what is God's nature. What is the nature of the spirit of the most high God? All right. We are supposed to be a light of the world. We are supposed to be a light unto one another. We are children of the light. We are children of the light. What is light? This is what I mean about knowing. God is a God of light. What does that mean? Illumination. He ignites, he kindles, burns, torch, dazzles, shining, brilliance, glow, twinkle, flash, flare. Glimmer, radiance, blaze. It is an adornment. In this world of darkness, the word of God is a light and illumination unto us. We too are children of the light. So we are little lights. All right? We should have insight, clarity, awareness, knowledge. And these lights, this, this light of God, this illumination that comes from the Most High, it gives edification and understanding. Okay? It ignites in one another the love, the desire, the thirst for the word of God. You're going to find, brothers and sisters, that as you move, rivers of living water are going to begin to flow from you onto one another. We pour out. As God pours in, we pour out. All right? And we know what we know. Why? Because God is faithful. He's faithful. All right. I want to go into the book of Galatians. All right. I want to go into the book of Galatians to give you some insight, brothers and sisters. All right. I'm trying to find the exact uh, passage. We're in chapter five. All right. We're going to start. Chapter 19, excuse me, verse 19. We're in chapter 5, we're in verse 19. We're going to, just, just, to be able to decipher the difference between the works of the flesh and the spirit that comes from God. Starting at chapter 19, I'm sorry, I keep saying chapter 19. Starting at the fifth chapter in the book of Galatians, verse 19. Now, the works of the flesh are manifest, made known. That's what manifest means. Revealed, made known, which are these. Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft. Witchcraft, when you don't follow God's law, God's word, not his, stance, his statutes, what God tells you. When you determine that you're going to ignore what God tells us, what God puts on your spirit. That's witchcraft. When you disobey God, it is like unto witchcraft. Hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envying, murders, drunkenness, revilings, and, and such like. Of the which I tell you before, as I have told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not. And inherit the kingdom of God. They shall not. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk. In the spirit, let us not be desirous of vain, of vain glory, provoking one another, envying one another. As I said, there are some among us who have led people astray, but the spirit of the Lord is raising up a standard against them. He's exposing that. 
You know them by their spirits, by their fruits. Okay? And the spirit of the Most High God is the spirit of truth. God will not leave you in darkness, brothers and sisters. We're coming out of our grave. We're standing. And the word of, the God, of God Almighty is bringing us back to ourselves, who we are. Being built up a house acceptable unto God. I want you to be encouraged. There is someone out there that God is touching you. He, the, the harvest is plenty, but the workers, the laborers are few. You may not believe or feel that what you're doing is reaching people, it, it, it is having its mighty work. But you have to remember, God's word goes out, doesn't come back void. It does exactly what he purposed it to do. And I need you to know that you are recognized by the Most High God. You are counted. When people come up against you, when you face resistance, that's God letting you know. That's your persecutor. He's letting you know the spirit of the Most High God is resting on you. Okay? As a matter of fact, I want to read it exact so that those among you who are feeling discouraged in your walk, who you're going about doing the work of the Most High God, but you may not feel encouraged at this time. Okay? One of the things, we're in the book of Matthew, chapter 5, and I'm going to verse 10. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice. Rejoice, brethren. Rejoice, my sisters. And be Exceeding glad, for great is your reward in heaven, for so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. Rejoice. And know that your work, we are encouraging one another. I listen to different things that the brothers and the sisters put out, and it encourages me. It keeps me going because, like I said, it's iron sharpens iron, face sharpens face. Here a little, there a little. We are each other's greatest support other than our Father, the Almighty God, His Holy Spirit, and His glorious Word of life. We are each other's encouraging. We keep each other going. We build this body up. If you feel as though what you're doing is not being heard or isn't having an effect, yes, you are. This word is for you. Yes, you are. And yes, it does. Okay. Many of us, and I know I'm in that number, we recognize that a lot of people shun us. Our families fall away from us. Different people revile us. They don't want to have anything to do with us. He's separated. He separated the sheep from the goat. But you need to be encouraged. We need to encourage and edify one another. Your words, your work is necessary. Your words are needed. Remember, faith come by hearing, hearing by the word of God. Speak that word. Be instant, in season and out of season. It's making a difference. It's working. It's working on me and I pray according to the most living God, most high living God, that this word is working on you. This word is for you because somebody is getting discouraged. Somebody is wondering whether it's being heard, whether it's making any difference at all. It's working, my sister. It's working, my brother. It matters. Stay strong. When you've done all you can do, stand. Stand in your faith. Stand on that word. Do not be moved. Don't turn to the right or to the left. Move forward. Keep going forward. The house of Israel is standing in the midst of the valley. 
There's a shaking in the valley, can't you hear it? All them bones coming together, can't you feel it? You get stronger. The muscles, the strength, the power is coming down. What power? The power from the Most High God. No man did it, therefore no man can stop it. This is from the Most High. He's in the camp. He's coming in. The flesh is a punishing, growing stronger. You're getting deeper. Now you're standing on your feet as a house. You know who you are. Be encouraged. Let this word of God go out and do exactly what he purposed it to do. And when an enemy come up against thee, remember, he said his angel charge over you to protect you wherever you go. And no weapon formed against you will prosper. It won't work. Stand. When you've done all that you can do, stand. God's going to come in and pour into you. There is someone who needs this word today. You need to be encouraged. You need to know. You're making a difference. We're encouraging one another, as I stated. I listen to a lot of things other people are putting out there. And I know it's working because it's working on me. I, too, get discouraged. But the spirit of the Most High God will come in and raise up a standard against that spirit of discouragement, against that spirit of doubt. Stand on your faith. Without faith, you cannot please God. Faith is, faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things yet to be seen. Stand on your faith. All right? Believe. Believe and you shall receive Knock, the door shall open, seek, you shall find it, ask me. Our Father delights in giving unto us, ask, it shall be given. God's at the very door of your heart. He's at the door of your heart. Let the Spirit of the Most High God come in. Let him come in. Brothers and sisters, we need to repent of our sins, seek the Lord. Recognize that Yeshua, some call him Jesus Christ, he did come down in flesh, walk among men, preach the word. He was the word. All right? And he was seeking the lost sheep of Israel. He died, rose from the grave, took his beautiful, pure blood into the Holy of Holies, presenting, presenting a perfect sacrifice. He's the high priest. He knows our infirmities. He knows our sitting down and our uprising. He knows. He too was tried on all points. He knows what you're going through. Yes, he does. He knows. He knows. He went before Father. Okay? You got a lawyer in the kingdom, and his name is Yeshua. You got a lawyer fighting for your spirit. You got an attorney in the house of God named Yeshua. He's on your side. And he ain't never lost the case. He's the son of God. He's the word of God. He cannot fail. Okay? Be blessed, brother. Be blessed, sister. And know that what you do matters. It makes a difference. You're building up the house of Israel. You're building it up. As you speak that word, that breath of life is coming into us. And we're standing upon our feet. We're standing. You're giving us those sinews, that flesh. You're feeding. Remember, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. When you speak that word, you are spiritually feeding God's children. You're doing a mighty work at God. Know those who are His. Do not be discouraged. Be encouraged. Without you, the body will be missing one of its parts. And it takes all of us to make this body complete. All of us. Not one of us. All of us. Giving all honor all praise, all thanks 
to God the Father in the mighty name of Yeshua, blessing, honoring, and acknowledging His glorious Holy Spirit. I pray this day, Father, that you come in and touch those who are discouraged. Let us encourage one another, edify one another. Pray, brothers and sisters, study. And those of us who are touched by God, when that spirit presses on me, I'm so busy studying or, 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 or trying to put this thing out there that I can't get peace until I do. When when it gets light again, when, when that pressing goes away, then I know it's done. But there's a word for you today. Somebody's discouraged. Somebody feels as though you've done too much and that God doesn't want you. That's the enemy. That's that deceiving spirit trying to make you fall. But we pray for one another. And you need to know God knows this world is for you. Keep going. Keep moving. You are not wrong. God loves you. He doesn't want so much as one of us to be lost. That's why he's sending his laborers out to go and find the lost sheep from the house of Israel. The laborers are out. And you are known. Be encouraged. Speak that word, be instant in season and out season. May the Lord God add a blessing to the reading, sharing of his word amongst the confederate house of Israel. Let all things be done in order, giving all honor unto the most high living God. I'm in awe of God, His majesty, His glory, what He is doing. Let us be cleansed by His Word. His Word cleanses us. It clears our mind. It sets our heart for peace. Remember, Yeshua said, let not thy heart be troubled. Be at peace, brethren, and know God is resting in his love for you. He's resting in it. He's in the midst of us. He's here and he's resting in it. May the Lord God add a blessing to his word. And this word is for you. You. It's for you. He knows you need to hear it. And you need to know he sees what you do. He understands what you're going through. Be encouraged. You're not alone. For my sisters who feel as though they're trying to walk with God and they're discouraged by people accusing them of things they've done, you got a sister in the Lord with you. We are one body. For the brothers who are doing all that they can do as we grow in this world together. You've got a sister with you who knows we are one body. There's a mother in the house of this man. And I won't stop a lioness among her whelps. Charged by God. God has sent his workers out to the field. And this work will not stop until God comes and brings everything he's done to full fruition. Walk in the light, brothers and sisters. Study your work. Pray. Pray that God opens up the eyes of your spirit. Gives you understanding and wisdom. And when people come amongst you and you're not sure about them, you pray for the spirit of discernment. God gives freely to his children. Be blessed. Shalom.